time to clutch out rounds for them. Some of the executions aren't quite 100% there. And I feel like, yes, they can be very good at it, but can also be quite poor as well. So hopefully they can turn up today. When I first saw them, obviously they had a great group stages here. Missed yesterday. Yep. When I saw them play at the level they were at, I thought, okay, these guys are the favorites of the tournament. Unfortunately Optics now, reason. now I've seen Optic, they've kind of taken my uh, kind of favorite poll to actually win the tournament so far. And they're waiting in the grand final for them. Yeah, and I don't think SK is any slouch either. I mean, again, the fact that they go to cash is not a normal map they play caught a lot of people off. And it, 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 it it's... It's weird to think about how this could actually shape him going into the major because we think about the strength of the map pool. Sean said right now he thinks Optic has the deepest. Probably that is true because there's so many changes for SK, but this kind of changes and puts another string to their bow. Right then. Super Sunday, Astralis versus SK Gaming. The first map will be cash. SK starting on the T side here. Three sets of armor, two smokes, and two flashbangs. And it's going to be aggressive stuff because Zipex here actually trying to look for some information. And Spots of Terror is actually falling back there, but he's going to be holding strong, trying to challenge him with the USP to kick things off here. Fox and Taco both out toward the squeaky door, not pushing into the hallway just yet, but that's where the bomb waits. So indicates SK want to try and do something with these two smokes over toward the A side. Zipex is going to be forward of where each of those would be expected to land. I would say the first. Well, I take it back, because Cold's thrown it out over toward B, trying to sell this. I was going to say, the first we go toward Quad, the second toward Highway, but Cold had one of them, and he's already put it on the mouth of the B site. So they'll rotate back over, go for the entries instead. Zipix has to fall back, and in doing so, Fox tries to come out squeaky and catch him off, but Kirby's there to defend him. Good shot to follow up as well as Kirby takes down. Fall in, and it's all, wow. all Astralis in the pistol round. There it is, a lovely little clean sweep there from Astralis, getting some information to the start, locking them out of A main. You could see SK Gaming with the intention to go towards A at the start. There are two smokes, one towards middle as well. They're trying to smoke off towards Highway, but absolutely getting wrecked at by the USPs as Kirby finding two, and the rest of the team chiming in as well. We are going to have a force buy from SK Gaming, of course, didn't get the bomb down there. Didn't really get much going at all in that round. Not a single frag obtained. So we've got Tech Nines, Deagles, no nades. That is a bit of a problem. They did this yesterday when they got the bomb down in the pistol. They went for that AXQ with all the smokes and flashes. They'll probably do something similar here. Aim for that A bomb side. But without the smokes and anything really to work with, I don't see them having really that much success towards that area. It's going to be Fox towards middle. Trying to make something happen here with the Desert Eagle. Desert Eagle can be very powerful in this map, especially towards our boost position. Lots of 1D potential here, and we'll see whether we can open things up. But unfortunately, for SK, it's going to be Kiabi there taking down Tack. The Vice is playing a little game of cat and mouse with Fox as well. The nade smartly Fox dodged, but then got reboosted. He's now re-peaked it. Device spotted him up, so good play from him to wait it out. Take down the second man in the round. And as you say, the Deagle on the boost position, quite powerful, but there's still armor up on three of the SK players, two of them on Tech Nines. Yeah, we've got three rifles here for Silas at this point. Got this huge advantage, five on three. Make the terrorists uh, go for the next move. Wait for commitment. You don't have to go hunting for any frags anymore. Get in positions where you have crossfires, you have backup from your teammates. No one has to go hunting. It can be a little bit frustrating at times, waiting for so long, but you just don't want to give anything away in terms of the CT economy. Very difficult to control at times. There's going to be bombing toward vents from mid. They've slept in. There's no one to watch from inside of the connector, but Dupree down below is going to have to read this well. Yeah, this is nice from him. You can see he's not actually getting towards that checker back box position. Wants to make sure he's allowing them to drop in first and they can't fall back at that point. And the vent's not blown out either, so that's going to be pretty obvious when that goes. He'll be in the perfect position for it. Exactly that. Now jump down, both line up, tried to go in for the trade kill, but Dupree finds both, looks out, finds Cold as well, spots him. Just has to wait this out with his team, and uh, he'll do it all himself. Why not with the USP as well? So 2 nothing for Astralis. Good Cold, play from him. Cold Zero actually headshot him there through the little wall. He did, um, I think it was like 52 damage, and then Dupree comes down and wrecks him. It was actually a really nice discipline play. Like I was saying, don't give anything away. He finds two, waits to back up, doesn't overcommit, doesn't go for the flashy three-man there, but after he got headshot with the wall, kind of had to. He nails the USP headshot there. 2-0 for Astralis. So far, so good. Cash CT side. It's a very balanced map in terms of like who's favorites win each side, but most teams will be opting to go CT first and setting themselves a personal record to go forward on their T side. This will be one of those redundant rounds from SK. No bomb going down in the first or second round, so just blocks across the board here. Really, if they get a bomb down here, I'd be super impressed. That's pretty much all they can really hope for at this stage. Maybe a full on rush towards B after a while and then try and get the bomb out squeaky. Something like that has to be a little bit novel, but uh, even to find a kill or two would be incredible with this sort of buy or lack thereof. Quick check the door. Pulls the attention of Zipix, who tries to spray back through, but meanwhile in mid, it's going to be cold boosted up again. Just the Glocks waiting it out. Nothing in the way of bomb plants, so I have to sit be patient to get the next guns out with utility. Good play from Device again to win this from the white box, but he's down to 14, or other, excuse me, 28. The reason I divided that by two, but he's to fall away. That brings Dupree back into it. Device falls back away, but it's get caught by Fur. 
Dupree's now sitting in the vents with both people looking his direction, so thankfully Kirby's able to rotate and take him down. And now we start with guns to come up for SK. Yeah. Well, the question is, is, oh, they're just, just light of it. Well, no op. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, so five AKs here, and Device, he loses his UMP there, but he already found two kills, so he's absolutely fine with that. He can upgrade to the AWP. It's actually quite beneficial to him to have the AWP go into this first gun round. Like you said, no AWP on the other side as well. He's got a decent spawn. He's got lots of money here. I think SK Gaming only picked up one frag so far after three rounds, so Astralis in a fantastic position, and we'll see what SK Gaming can bring to the table. They have got five smokes, but two Molotovs and a few flashbangs to work with. It's not ideal, especially about that AWP. And actually sending four players towards A. They're very good at the set pieces on this map. They do the four smokes towards A. They have a couple of different variations of it as well, where they either commit heavily towards the A storage area or fall back and boost through middle and go towards highway. So I believe he's going to be the one to check inside of checkers this time. Immediate change. There's so many positions you can play the AWP, and if you go to double op, you can put one on either site. You've got Z connector in mid. It does create, create, as you say, not just the pushing and aggression from the CT size, but a lot of possibilities in terms of the default as well, depending on the weaponry you're using. Yeah, well, we have got some mid-control here for SK Gaming. This is fine. The Stratos are allowing it. You can see they have a Famas and a UMP left over. They don't necessarily have the firepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with the AK-47s. So giving up mid, that's not a huge problem. Yes, it's a very valuable part of the map, but still, you can hold the bomb sites. They have the crossfires with the SMGs as well. We have a nice little boost coming in for KRB. He's watching Highway for now, but when the execution does come in, potentially, he'll be looking to have that bird's-eye view of them and take a couple down with him. Three go around corner, smoke down, and boost up. Kirby waiting for this, playing it tight in the corner as well it means you've got to commit before you can spot him. Problem is we've got three incendiaries left for Astralis here at the 30 second mark. As soon as these smokes come in from SK Gaming, it's going to be very clear that's the final commitment. They can drop them at the same time and possibly challenge at the same time. Flash timing works out as well. First need. Smoke that is going to go to the top of the highway position, but they don't smoke off device. He's going to pick up the first shot. Glaive, he'll follow up. A good read from Fur to spot Kirby, who shuffled out trying to catch them off. This shot, though, inside of the site could be a problem because now with Zipix down, it's the rifle gone, and AWP up close can't do anything of it. He's got to rotate over, tries to catch them before they get to default. Ten seconds. Oh, that kill could have done it. It could have denied the round. It's on to Dupree. And they'll get the plant in. Started it at seven seconds. Both peeking at once. Watch the UMP from far because good tap into Fallen, but. Taco shuffles out instead. Yeah, fantastic round out Taco. It was looking very promising for Astralis. They actually funneled them back towards A. They knew exactly what was going on. Like I said, it was quite clear as to what intentions SK Gaming had towards the end of that round. The smokes come in as well. They have the boost. They find the first frag of the AWP. And Device, he just can't hit this shot. That was the important one right there when Taco took him down in the bomb site. It allowed them to get him towards the site and fallen. And he finds another interesting kill. And it's going to be a nice round from SK Gaming. They managed to keep, I think, two players alive in the end. But there's still plenty of money available for Astralis here. 3 1. It's definitely reset potential here for SK Game they do pick up the AWP themselves, that's in the hands of Fallen. Fur will just be on a Tech 9, so that kind of suggests how low their economy is after that close round. Device, quick check at door, so they do look for some aggression on the AWP. Now he's going to wait as well. Don't going to be flashed in with the AWP, instead he's going to be flashed off, so Zipix needs to place this. A little bit of spray will catch him as well. I say just 94 HP. Consequential, really, as Taco tries again to spot his forward position. They knew he was there. Scoops out just the wrong time. Oh, Spock shows his face. Nearly gets the wall into him, but not quite. He goes down to nine now, so he's got to be very careful on where he positions this AWP. It's still relevant, but Fox is going to take mid with that, and this will open up a lot of opportunity if he can get up toward the white box. There's no one inside Vent as well, so he's going to have a passive hold toward the connector, and that's it. Yeah, no real map control gain, though, from SK. Yes, they've done damage towards the device, but they haven't really picked up anything as of yet. So Fallen's going to try and find a pick towards B at this stage. No one really that aggressive. It's going to be device, actually, the key player in this situation. Fox oh, shuffles back to Garage. And I said Dupree was passive. He peeked out at the exact time and could have caught him off. And then he stands in the open with an aid. A bit questionable. Nearly caught with it, but he stays alive. That's the main thing right now. And as you say, Fallen was trying to get that pick over toward B so they could simply get something rolling. Good damage back and return through to Taco. That's sprayed at the door from Zipix. He goes down to 10 HP. Well, it's the same situation once again. 20 seconds, no map control. It's going to be very obvious as to where they're going with the final commitment. I'm not, I think Dupree and Dupree started the rotation. They know this is going to A, so he heard the player that was over at B waiting, Fallen, trying to rotate back across. Good pick up from Kirby. Remember last time the way the round changed was when they took out Zipix in this exact position, even though they lost the first entries. This time he times it well, takes Bomb down. That'll allow Dupree to come back over inside of the smoke. They can defend that together. Two and with seconds. one second, just stay alive because they can't afford to die after the round. 
Yeah, that's a problem for SK Gaming, trying to work those picks for so long. They needed to damage the device, but it's waiting around. They get to the 22nd mile before they actually commit to the eight side. They haven't got the mid control. They can't really split it. They're all coming out the same entrance there. It was Taco, who's in towards Squeaky Door. He's taking out the 10 HP for the wall bangs. And as I said, as soon as those smokes come in, you can see the CD set up for it. One player on the ladder position. Does a lot of damage. Take the player down with him. And it's just about that quad player staying alive for as long as he possibly can, denying that bomb plant. He does it to perfection. And SK Gaming keep three players alive, but that's certainly affected them going forward. Now it's going to be two Tech Nines. We still do have the AWP, and it looks like a heavy B commitment coming in nice and early. Dupree stays up on Heaven, nades through instead. Like a Fallen just considers the Skylight boost. We haven't seen one of those in a while, to be fair. Yeah, that hasn't been in fashion for quite a while. Maybe it's time to bring it back. I think we'll do it in matchmaking, Henry, you and I. Okay. But I'm the one boosted, because I need all the free kills I can get. Glaive's going to try and wait again. He hasn't been aggressive on this peak too often unless the smoke's deployed by his teammate. That's the only time he really pushes up to see if they're going to get close to the box. And Taco's done exactly that. So good forward stance means fast execution means Dupree's got to be ready. But they're all looking his direction, which means Glaive can pop behind them. He's got the bomb and the racks are turned. Glaive's got three. Yes, he does. Nope, Dupree steals. It doesn't matter. Kills the same. And now he'll find his third lovely shot on cold. Looking a little bit desperate from SK at the moment. Didn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to go in towards B there. Trying to go for that surprise mentality. Pushing through at a set time. And although they had the drop on Glaive and Device at that point, they didn't seem to be ready for it. Nailing the shots and Glaive in that checkers position as well. He didn't seem to be aware that could even be a possibility. He finds the first frag, goes back towards the bomb site. They're not even watching it. Was the communication breaking down at that point? Not so sure, but now it's just going to be Fernow on a 5 on 1. That B attack completely locked down. Wasn't so much even an execution there. Just trying to walk into the site. More of a contact mentality. As we go in now, the 30-second mark, for, he'll be just looking to die at this point. He's only got $300 in the bank and need a Tech-9. If you can save the AWP, that'd be amazing, but I don't really see it happening. And we're holding up in this terrorist connector position, and I'm sure his demise will be coming in momentarily. And Dupree is getting ever closer. First, not sure which way to look. Doesn't matter. Both ways are wrong. There's people on either side. Good pick up, Glaive. Stay alive. Again. Glaive in that round, 4 plus 1, gets the assist on the Dupree kill, but does all the work, and like you said, they just overlook it, they walk directly past him. Yeah, so he gets his first kill, you think at that point, he's in checkers, you've got to stop and check him, like obviously, Taco and Fallen concentrating on the player on the bombs, has Dupree doing a great job taking the aggro away from him, but it still looks sloppy from SK Gaming, you need to view the smokes and the Molotovs to actually get the CT's added position on the bomb site. they look too comfortable there, they can't have that sort of powerful crossfire coming in, but you can see no real flashes coming in towards checkers, he looked actually quite comfortable the whole time with that one. Of course now a full eco for SK Gaming after saving those weapons in the previous rounds, you don't get any money when you save weapons without getting the bomb down, so... Now oh, Dupree, he's on the hunt, he's trying to get in the zone here. Build his own confidence up by finding these unarmored players, mowing a couple of them down, getting some good information as well as he pushes in towards the B storage. Zipex holding towards the forklift, the bomb is still down towards T-spawn at this point, with three players towards the KRB, opens things up, takes down first. Shot on a fallen, successful. It's two for him inside of mid, he continues to put the pressure in that direction, he'll just take them all, thank you very much. Hat trick for him as Cold and Taco remain, and SK looking slow so far on the T side. Remember yesterday, the T side was quite good, they had a 10-5 half on this particular map, and most of it was due to the fact that their entries were successful. They're not even getting the economy rolling to find the weaponry to do so. It becomes a bit of a problem as Astralis start to build up momentum. And not only that, with five staying alive, there will now be two straight rounds, a massive bank account as well. So, there it is. Let's say lost bonus. We've got enough for a buy here for SK, but we wouldn't have the AWP. To be fair, it hasn't had a huge amount of impact yet. We'll have a quick look at the scoreboards while we're here. So Fox having a rough time, 0 and 7 for him. But to be fair, Cold Zero, the star player of the team, 1 for 6. No one's really got rolling yet. As for SK Gaming, the first round they picked up was quickly replied by Astralis, and the money's been a bit of a problem ever since. Random break comes in, like we said, 5 AKs. They do have smokes to work with some Molotovs as well. I think going back to the execution at this point, we know that set piece all day is very powerful. It's got a complete wall of smokes on the site. The Molotovs flush out the CTs, and the flash just seems to be relentless. So I'd like to see that come in at some point. And we have got a lot of mid presence this time from the CTs. They're mixing things up. They've been leaving mid relatively open to Sakiabi there by himself battling. And he showed that last run as well against that Eco. So this is a great time to adapt things. Three players there to actually challenge where SK might have try and get that real estate once again. Boost for Fox. Timing could be everything. Dupree just gets into the cubby before he peeks around. And looked all the way over. He might have found him. Then nice. flames at his feet. Backed away. Yeah, that's a really nice time to drop it there. So anything Fox is trying to get going with the opening pick, he has to wait now. Maybe get reboosted still quite early on in the round, but just knocks him off and makes things a little bit more frustrating for him. Well, Glaive inside sight's relocated given the spray coming through the door. But it's three players there. Glaive's going to get closer with Kierby. It's a big shot back now. Fur finds the first, though. It's going to open things up. A good trade. Glaive, I said, was next to him. They held each other's hands, walked back around, and the right instantly. That shuts down any aggression SK wanted to apply. But instead, they can go over toward B. They do read there's a good aggression 
And Stance on A. Problem is, this is where the AWP is as well. They don't flash it this Ooh. time. That's what's going to happen. Fox goes down again and the bomb's been dropped. Fox jumps straight into his crosshair. He was looking out towards Skylight, but it works. Device will take it. Gets a second as well. Blinded <laughs> up, but just <laughs> caught the kneecap coming around the corner. Yeah. Round over, I'm afraid. It's going to be Taco now in a three versus one. 30 seconds remaining. Got to see if he can find any sort of frag here. But Device, I was going to say, should be able to nail that shot. Can't quite find it, but gets away with his life. The Green looking to close things out. Actually gives Taco a winnable situation now. At this point, this is the discipline I'm talking about. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. Make him commit to the bomb site at that point and just shut him down when he tries to go to the plant. Problem is the device is so far back in the second oh, flag. Fang's not going to catch him, and they know exactly where he is. They were waiting as well with Zipix inside of the vent. Seven to one. We need not talk about lost round bonus. It's not quite maxed out, to be fair, because it was 3-1 was when they picked up their first round, so it's at four. But they've got so much money on the Astralis side, you've got to break them down, not only win rounds yourself. You want to be smoking off that entrance to be, at least uh, the, when you're going for those sort of rounds, so you don't even have to commit to it, just to take the vision away, so someone like that, or at least flash it so you guys can make him force a shot out. He looked very comfortable there. Fox tried to jump around the corner. The idea is he jumps around the device, goes with him, and you instantly refrag him. Didn't really work out like that. I'm assuming this will be the execute. Like I said, they're very good at these set pieces. You'll see they have got flashbangs to work with. They do a complete wall of smoke to so throw a Molotov towards squad as well. And to see if Device can hold him off is perfect when Device is there with the AWP. This shuts him out. He's actually going to relocate. First school wall of smoke execution that we've seen. And this is a smart relocation because he can see through the smokes over toward door nearly. The shot toward Taco. He's down to 27, by the way, before they've even entered. It seems teams love to run smokes when they don't have weapons, but they rely too heavily on picks. Maybe try this with the weapons and you'll see what happens because right now they're just getting shut down on the entries. Even the best intentions denied. Taco's made his way in toward the quad coming out from Squeaky, but they know that that's where he came from. They have to, surely. Maybe not, because the free jumps in. And Zipix to trade it. Well, that no bomb planted once again, but like you said, I think we're actually at a maximum loss bonus now. Only one round picked up but so far for SK Gaming. We'll have a, a decent buy here. They can get the AWP out, but is this a tactical pause? I assume it is for SK. That yeah. would make a lot of sense at this point, right? You need to kind of work out what's going on. The defaults don't seem to be so strong for them right now. They're not really necessarily getting the correct picks, and when they do, it's answered back straight away. There's always good reactions on cash. That's when you know a solid CT team is playing. As soon as they lose one player, they're finding the return almost instantaneously. So round number 10. We'll have a look at the money for SK. They've got about 5k on Taco. In terms of Fallen's buy, he can't even buy it. They're about to be dropped down. I think they have to be 5 AKs once again. It's not looking good in terms of the initial picks. It seems Astralis are adapting every single round, showing no presence towards middle, and then sending three there. Just shutting it down. Good vents play as well. And we have got the 5 AKs coming in. There is decent utility as well. I wouldn't be surprised at this point in saying, let's just go to those set pieces. Let's just do them off the bat. Let's just see if we can get in there, get a bomb down. We know the power form. We have to get AKs as well. But Device, he's in the zone right now. Nine for two. And a player like him, he won't be keeping the same position every single round. He'll be moving towards B, middle, A. And we'll see whether he likes to go aggressive here. He's actually got a really decent spawn to check towards the B's storage position. Device. Ops already in play. You're dead right. Fast spawn. He's going to change it up, actually, and get in toward the checker room instead. Meanwhile, in mid, a lot of pressure again from Astralis. They continue to put up to three players there. Again, this time that's the case. Dupree, Glaive, set crossfire close up near the mouth of the garage. Wall as well, but Device walks out ball and just standing there. Dupree, as I mentioned, was already at a prime time, prime angle. That's going to bait in Glaive because they find him in return. It's two kills for the M4. Bong goes down and still can respond all he likes, but he's got to find three more before any chance the round going his way, and Zipix not going to allow that. This is looking quite desperate now from SK. Fallen just going for the real Hail Mary play there. He knows Device been playing with that AWP. He actually gives his position away by pre-firing angles. Device is stands there. It's like, well, okay, you're going to give me a free kill. I'll take it all day long. And now SK force buying into this round. You're not winning with the full buys here with the smokes and Molotovs. You'll be buying in with two Galils, two AKs, and Fur. He's going to the UMP. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of this. It's not over just yet. If you start force buying like this, though, you're definitely making a case for it. Round number 11, no double AWP yet. It's not really required. Why change this thing from Astralis? Just keep changing the positions up. And like I said, set pieces have been their strong point in previous matchups and cash. Maybe just going for one of those once again. You can see on the minimap right now, lining up those smokes. And they are very good at these if they allow themselves to actually get to the bomb site and find the first kill. That's the key. Get the entry frag and see whether you can actually make this happen. This is the variation. So this one is split A from the highway position. They go for a boost on it as well. They did Molotov out the vents to push them back, but Kirby's still waiting. Pops out, takes cold so, so quickly. Flash back in. They're hesitant already. Locked in position. Good response from Fox. Taco's found Zipix. This will open things up. But look at Dupree. This timing is everything. Already up highway. Not checking. Thank you very much. Two kills for sloppy. him. Bomb goes down again. It's very, very sloppy from SK. You can see they're quite tunnel visioned right now. They're saying, right, got to run the tactic. Can't do anything else. Whatever happens this round, just keep running the tactic. 
and it just all falls apart there. Dupree gifted two free frags to Evan Connector. And, and this is where I think the map pool became interesting yesterday. They might have played themselves in this sense because they bait in Dignitas, who know that they're not going to pick cash. It's not a map they ever go to. They say with Fox, let's try it. It works against Dignitas, who don't really play it themselves very often. But now they try it here, and they're just, they look completely lost. This, is, this shows why they don't play it. Never mind Fox coming in. This is just fundamentals breaking down on every aspect. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying the defaults. That's not working. They tried the set piece, like I said, the variation when they go towards highway. But you see that first skill from Kiabi? He's on no pressure on him. He's not being flashed at the start of the round. But you can smoke that highway position as well to take his vision away to even get him out of position. He gets one kill. He can easily fall back. It just looks way too easy for them right now. And device, this is what I'm talking about. Changing your position every round just when they're adapting. It's another force by from SK. It feels like they're out of this one now, but they're going to be going in with Galil. Eagles and a couple of AKs here. Device spots a player in Squeaky Door. Doesn't hit the shot, but at least shows that he's in that position. Just scaring them a little bit. At this point, you probably want to reposition. You've shown you're in Squeaky Door. Maybe go back towards middle now. You could even go back towards B and hopefully funnel them to another position. Smoke back toward mid. He did say he'd relocate. He's done exactly that. Looking toward the boost after that smoke's deployed as well. So playing his own utility game to try and you can manipulate what comes against him. You can see this adaption from uh, Astralis as a whole. Like we said, they haven't got much mid-presence now. They've been playing three players there before. So SK have to be very careful here. They can't give too much away. They're going to be smoking connector. A good start. That's what uh, Dupree got them from before. Are they going to commit to this? Two players boosted up. Flashes come in. Going to try and get that control now. No CD presence at all. This is fine there for Astralis. Like we said, as long as you're controlling the bomb site and you have device watching highway, that's not a problem. Kirby's gone very far back to allow them to walk up middle as well. He's just going to play this off of Qs and Calms. You're dead right, though. Device goes so far back inside of A. They've got the boost ready. WP was in position, but they've relocated over toward B, and that might be the smarter call in this, especially with Vents now attained from SK. Deagle on Tech 9. Golden for rest on rifles. In they go. Blade waiting to try and boost himself above the smoke, but. As he falls away, that's when they cross. And Dupree, playing off of him, is waiting for the approach. As to his gear beat. Again, SK leaving themselves with little time. It's old Navi problems, but Glaive, Freddy, Flash comes in. Perfectly timed for Cole, but he can't land the shot. That gives him a chance. Now he's found one over the edge. In goes his teammate, but he goes too far. Too soon. Fallen oh, well. takes him down and Fox. Oh, just, just, about that. just got him. You're dead right. Fallen's going to get on the site, but they're still lined up. They know where they are. They're all committed to the back platform with the exception of Cold Zera. And as I mentioned, he's only got a deagle, so playing this from inside of Checkers, he better hope his teammates do some damage to give them a favorable situation. They do have the man advantage to work with. On a missed shot, Zipix is going to take that back as Fallen falls. And Kirby slowly approaching. Now the question is, the second man, they know they were on top of the site. That's when he peaks. Well timed for Cold Zero. Down goes his teammate, and finally SK will convert around. There it is. It was very hit or miss, Matt, when they're actually going towards that bomb site as well. There's like 10 seconds before they actually commit to the site. One more kill there going in favor of Astralis, who's going to fall apart. The bomb goes down on the four second mark. I was about to say, with only two players staying alive, they need efficiency. Cold, one of the two, tries to run in and grab a gun. All he gets is the Galil. Better than nothing, I, ha I guess, in this case, where they're trying to build back in, but he was looking for an AK and couldn't find it. Yeah, well, the problem is, yeah, two players surviving. You get up an AWP here. If they lose this round, that's a loss bonus in the bin as well. And that potentially means a double eco going forward. We'll see what they bring to the table in round number 13. Further decent spawn. Doesn't get there before the smoke blooms, though, so can't really do too much of that. That's why he's got the AWP. You have the decent spawn. Sometimes, in the CDs have a bad spawn towards middle, you can beat them there and get that first pick. But not meant to be this time. We have got that mid control coming from the CTs once again. First, going to start to push into aim in as well. What a change already from Astralis. It's been a long time since we've seen a 1-3-1 split be the common tactic on a defensive side. So obviously they expect SK to put a lot of mid-pressure on. So we see a 2-2-1 with the 1 being over at B. And then variations based on AWP placement. Fox for all getting ready toward A main. Fox has already boosted up. He's been waiting for his opportunity so many times in this position. He's on an AK-47 this time around, but be careful because Dupree's made his way inside of the vents and Kirby's been winning that battle more often than not as they get ready on the day. So the door for Glaive as well is already going to be problematic. Taco on 16 before they even arrive. Fallen does have the pre-aim onto the slide. He slides instead. Nice reaction. Catches off Glaive as the flash comes in. It didn't quite blind him in full duration. That one will force them back. And allow a little bit of time for rotations. It's pulled Dupree out of the vent so he can watch middle and allow Kirby to top a highway. Inside of the site, going full, hesitating, holding up inside of the smoke. Good shot, Paul, and his Ipix took him down. Paul is able to get back into him immediately because that's going to open up back a quad and for a plant. No Molotovs in place to deny that. Again, a man advantage for SK, but they're hesitant slightly just because of the flashes coming in. Now, Paul gets into default. 
Then does go down. Retake will be coming. You see three players towards middle. They might just be giving this one up. I think at this point it's probably a good idea. You can see Kiabi, low HP. They've got Device there with the AWP, trying to see if anyone gives anything away at this point. But Astralis, they tried to actually be a little bit aggressive there. It's fallen, giving himself some time to work these picks. He actually had time to actually justify that. It's going to be Taco coming in with a flank there as well. Nice job from him to take down Device. That's the Orb dropped as well, so that's a big scalp to take. Having a look at the money for Astralis going forward, they'll get 1900 on top of this one. So the buy is okay. You can see Kiabi 7k. 5k on Zipex as well, so a couple of players, if they can save his M4, that'd be fantastic. They'd probably get a full buy around. This is Kiabi's a little bit lower than everyone else. Yeah. Nice work from Fallen to open things up. Glaive, give his position away. Fallen hits a couple of nice shots, then they find round number three. It's weird. And all things considered, I mentioned it was going to take a while to break them down. It's only two wins in a row, which that alone wouldn't do it. It's the fact that the previous few losses did actually come to closer situations, so they've chiseled it away. As you say, though, the saves, they'll be able to buy into this. They've got decent money here, but round 15 could be a different story if SA is able to convert. And then you go 10-5. It's not the end of the world. It's not no, the worst scenario. 10-5 is definitely fine. Going forward into the second half, we win the pistol, you're straight back into the game. 12-3, on the other hand, that's not so great. They need to really try and pull the socks up over the final two rounds. Got two in a row now, looking more confident with it. It's going to be the presence once again in the CT. Garby will be Molotov in the boost position as well. Two pretty smoked out. They seem to be favoring towards the A side. That's why Device is going to be changing position. Ball and waiting from as well. Could get the drop on him here, and he misses the shot. And oh. Device nails an absolute Masterful shot there, lovely stuff from him. Fur goes down before and replies straight away. Fallen was in position to take the first shot, but get thrown off by the nade, expecting it to be a flash. So Device did well to get one there, and a lovely shot indeed. Traded back. Maybe now the battle at we've seen this multiple times. Different angle this time, and unfortunately, Zipix had sprayed far too many bullets, didn't have any left over, and suddenly Taco is able to take him. Finally, they get a man advantage early enough that they can set up an execution with this, but they're going to try and compensate for it as always. With this mid-pressure, Cold waiting, it's they're going to boost. Return timing, never misses the shot, Cold. Great reaction, down to a four versus two now in favor of the Brazilians. Well, there it is. The timing was going to go in someone's favor, and Cold is ready for the counter boost in the CT side. Four on two now, they have a minute to play with, don't have to overcommit. See what the reaction is, see if we can get a little bit of a read here. The bomb will be making its way towards Eddie, using the Molotovs efficiently as well. It's eradicating risk at this point. Lovely positioning from Cold Zero, watching the flanks, and now it's up to do three. Four kills to find, gets one, and drops the bomb as well. This could get interesting, Fallen can't find the kill. Nearly gets away in that smoke as well. That could have been a problem for them if he isolates him behind quad, but well found, well taken. And as we mentioned, money starts to be an issue. They'll buy everything they can, so it goes to device immediately. He had the money for the AWP. They had a little more than I thought, but they've got Chad's favorite gun. Oh yes, the auto shotgun comes out. A rare appearance. Haven't seen it much this tournament. I think this is probably the first time we've seen it. But we still have an open device and three M4, so it's not the worst case scenario. Dupree, with that weapon, you want to be able to go towards checkers, uh, maybe very close range in middle. The vent could work out as well. Let's see what he decides to do here. Looks like he'll be flashing towards mid and smoking out to help his teammate up there. One once, kit. Yeah, there's a bit of a problem. And that kit's on Kirby, who they're pushing at middle. He goes down there. <laughs> a long way from the action to grab that kit. It'll be redundant at that point in time. Lovely shot from Fox, take Dupree down. And Kirby bails immediately. Yeah, well, this is looking promising for the 10-5 now. And all things considered, the way this kicked off for SK, they look lost on this map when we first started in the first six or seven rounds or so. They've actually recovered, slowed things down, not so much. They're going to the bomb sites at the absolute last second. They're actually working the picks and challenging and starting to hit shots now. Nice waiting on the angle in front of the squeaky doorway. Shuffles back in toward MBK instead, over by the fence. Fox as well, just waiting for his opportunity, but no one going that direction just yet. They are going to rotation in early. They're leaving the B site completely. This is taking a gamble because they've got to make a play to pull this back. Down a man on the defensive side, spread very thin on a map like Cash, which has decently long rotations, all things considered. You kind of have to be ahead of the play, not behind it, or you'll have a large task on a retake. Both sites quite difficult to get back into. Well. 35 second mark now, looks like they will be committing towards they have two players in the middle, but Device hits another wonderful shot. Stays down Fox with Cold Zero, instantly replies, still with that man advantage, but 25 seconds remaining now. Glaive didn't need to do that. He was still in the mentality that they had to find the next pick. Meanwhile, those Zipix has done a decent job on top of Catwalk. That's going to leave him open to Taco. We'll come back to that point in a second, because Device is now in a one versus three. Knows Taco's at the door. He's going to find elsewhere, misses that first shot. That's the entry. Q, lovely shot on the second, but can't reset for the third. 10-5.
is a very good half, all things considered. But I think Glaive was caught in the mentality they needed the next pick. As soon as Device found one, he still pushed his smoke with no knowledge of what was on the other side. Yeah. He could have held back as soon as Device got that pick. Well, there it is. It's not as scary as we kind of anticipated at that point. Astralis really well running away with that game. I mean, it's good, though. SK took the pause. They worked out what was going wrong for them. A few horrible executions and poor defaults as well, but they kind of got back into it. And 10-5 is a respectable score. And overall, like I said, they win this pistol. This could be anyone's game still. So we'll see what happens here. We'll have a look at the buys quickly as well. And he's going to be a strata, of course, swapping over to the T side. So we'll have a look at theirs first. Kiabi gets the smoke. Flashbang in a P250. And it's a Deagle out. This is a different kind of Superman. He's got a Deagle and body armor for Dupree. Okay. It's 1.6 Superman. Yeah. But it is Dupree. And we know the Deagle in Dupree's hands is usually promising. He's got to be careful not to take too much damage early, though. Down to 27. Swap it over. Yeah. Not Superman anymore. He's met his kryptonite. Well, yeah, a lot of players do My that. jokes are great. Yeah, they are great. Thanks. Um, Scream, Nico are very good at the Deagle on the pistol round. Uh, especially on Cash as well. You see Nico do some ridiculous stuff in that sort of position. Dupree, unable to land the shot just yet. Gets himself in a headshot position here. So even if he gets shot, it's going to be in the head regardless. So it doesn't matter if you have low HP. So that's a good adjustment from him. He can't find the damage. They've done a little bit towards Fur and Fallen, but... I think yeah. need to report in terms the, of Deagle potential. This is, well, now they've got Superman on device, and this is the call. You've got to give it to one of the two armor players if you want to make the investment worth it. So Zipix or device. No offense to Zipix, but of the two on a Deagle, I'd pick device as well. So they're going to let him try and find the entry. <laughs> you said headshot. That's one from far. Yeah. Taco nails him from the truck. Peru's going to try and do the same through the smoke. Zipix is far enough removed. He won't be able to grab that. Glaive goes to it instead, and Taco finds yet another. Playing the perimeter on the A site, the retake game, it's not uncommon. It's exactly what they'll have to play for now, but they've found picks on the way through. Zipix gets one of return. Zipix finds another on the Fallen. Dupree's going to hold off Cold in this rotation. They've got a chance all of a sudden. Low HP as well. It might be a one versus three, but it's five on Cold, six on Taco. Fox is the difference in this, and he's already found him. Problem is, they're going to line him up. He's isolated. It down looks the wrong way, but the peak oh. back out. Thankfully, Taco's there. Suddenly had a chance there. Zipix finds three kills in total. Like you said, Taco, low HP as well. That could have been... A real opportunity for Zipex to take that and get the ace as well. But the bombers go down. Could have gone either way at that point, but the Deagle didn't really get rolling for Astralis there at all. They tried on a few different players, but got their heads ripped off each and every time. But there we go. SK pick up the pistol here. There's a couple of replays from the headshot of Taco. Nice stuff from him to find a couple of frags in the end. Lovely work. And presumably we'll see the AKs come out of the third from Astralis. You can buy up in the second round. They got a three kills there, but it'd be like Zipex on an AK and then purchasing some Deagles around him as well. But it looks like they're going for the more conservative option here. AKs in the third round, which I like. And normally we say SK Gaming go for that real heavy SMG mentality. They've actually got a couple of rifles here. They can fill the AKs coming, of course, in the third round. So this makes sense. The UMP is certainly viable in gun rounds these days as well. So for now, Astralis, they've got a Deagle and a couple of PT-50s. Try and work a pick here, see if Zipex can do anything with that upgraded pistol. door, no one that close, even though it's opened up. But it's backed away after doing so, so he's safe in that position, at least for now. As meet device, meanwhile, is going to try and get up toward middle check bags. No one there. He's going to confirm that as Taco's going to get ever closer with the M4. And we talked yesterday a little bit about SK going toward SMGs. This is a map they have gone for the five approach before. First and the MP9. So they go with two rifles instead. Taco's getting picked apart slowly. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Death by one headshot. Dupree gets picked off. They'll smoke them immediately. That's what they've got to do. That's going to give them a lot of approach onto highway. Fur's already slowed that down slightly. Try to pitch them back in. Yeah, not really much they can do with this one. They are getting players towards squeaky as well. They can get the bomb out. That'd be fantastic. Fur is kind of preoccupied towards a highway position. Let's readjust towards the squeaky door. Just going to try and get that bomb down, but they have got a couple of players watching it at the moment. And we have got as well. I think fallen in towards A main, but Fur, he doesn't even need the backup right now. Doing work with the MP9. Okay. <laughs> Lovely shot from Glaive under Fur, but. Because he's left vulnerable, no one around him fallen back toward the site for Maymane. Good pick up on the bomb. Uh, and device next to fall, SK. All things going the way they need to so far in the second round. Look for that 3 0, but that early bomb plant. The problem is they're going to have the early guns, which is why we talked a little bit about those SMGs. And Fur was unable to pick up anything with the MP9, so what's the decision for him? I think smartly, yeah, drop a rifle over to him, get all guns out where you can. Yeah, so they got three M4s in the end, two UMPs, as I stated before. The UMP currently very strongly in the meta. It actually be used like a rifle in the right hands, and it's a, a very efficient weapon. But taking those close-range encounters does a lot of armor penetration as well, and obviously you get the kill reward as well, which is $600. So Glaive, looking very aggressive there. He's going for the wall bang instead, trying to put some damage, but no players in the TD towards middle as of yet. In terms of utility, we had three smokes. 
One Molotov and a couple of flashbacks, that's about it. It's not ideal, it won't be a full execution. He could be trying to work that first pick. This will definitely be a default. We're going to try to skip things off. When they say default, it means you spread across the map, see what opportunity is available for you, and see if you can find those opening kills with these AKs once the smokes dissipate. Okay, just went to that Marcus position as well. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. It's overlooked often when they flash themselves into the AB. Zip toward the door. Bomb not committed either direction. Identify where these SMGs are. Zira. He's got one of them peaks from heaven, nearly gets a bullet from Dupree back in his direction. He's only got a UMP as well, so he can't really challenge that. It's interesting he actually refaces the position. They did reflash it as well, so I guess he's just trying to get the information back in his favor. And now the boost comes in. We talk about middle so much on this map. It's a real prime bit of real estate on the map. Once you have this, it's the gateway. You have the options to go towards B for the split. Obviously, you have an A split as well through highway. And Fallen's holding it with a UMP as well. So another decent angle. Like you say, it can be played as a rifle, but it does still have its limitations. Flash down to check Cubby, drop over. He's going to be ready for this, but Smoke's out inside. They're not committing to peeking just yet. Only one player down. Now two. Third one out. A lot of pressure going to be applied. Is it going to be Venter Highway? Because they've got the options to them at this point. With Dupree trying to get in. You would have expected Vent. That's busted out. They've already found the first kill, and now they know they are that direction. Bombs inside a checker. Smoke's waiting with the M4. It's going to have Cold inside the site with him, and Smoke bomb on tree. Technically, he's going to be falling to go to heaven. Good pop spot from Fox. Fallen finds device as well. Cold the third to peak. They all do it accordingly, playing off each other perfectly. And Zip is the next in line. He'll go down immediately after. Great read from SK. And the bonus round pays off. They're Absolutely. within two, and no money left over on the Astralis side. Really strong round for them as well. They actually buy their time so well. It gets under the 25 second mark. Similar scene to what we saw in the first half. You can get a decent read as to where they're going to go. Instead of having a player in heaven and one toward checkers, perhaps like that, they actually go to the back of the site. They make them heavily commit, have the actual aggro and uh, repeaks. Timing's perfectly at that point. Mannington to actually take the headshots, hide, and allow the teammate to face at the same time as well. So, good job there from SK. They're straight back into this game and actually making the scoreline very close indeed. It should be 10 9 after this round to be three P250s, a couple of Deagles, and trying to work a pick towards B storage potentially here. Not so much in terms of an initial intention from Astralis here. Going to be boosting one player up to try his first pick, and Kiabi is going to walk into B. Let's get a little bit of damage to Cold there and takes him down as well. So good start for Astralis here. Good read to actually consider that position. That's why Cold plays it, because most people peek low or cross over toward the headshot shot instead, headshot position instead, I should say. And checks it, takes him down. No reason not to. There's no other angle from that position where he'd be left vulnerable. Quick check into AMA to try and make up for the deficit. No one there, but watch Squeaky because they'll have heard them pushing through. There could have been an opportunity for Glaive to pop out. Meanwhile, the Vice is tagged up with Bomb. He's heading that direction. Due to the fact that Debris gotten out of middle, so good win from Fallen. He goes down on highway, and you pinch the site, just Taco and Fur inside. Awkward positioning situation. It's smart. I understand what Fur's trying to do, but the problem is he can get pinched off from Squeaky, as we mentioned. Exactly that, because Glaive walks out in the exact what? moment his team's moving. Taco's not there to cover it off, and Glaive's now got two. Lovely shot on Fallen. Thankfully, Taco does pick up the ball, but he's gone low again. Glaive, so much damage, but watch the AK, because Taco's on 11. Zipix trying to isolate him. The problem is the teammate's already rotated in. He's got a problem if he tries to push. Fox has an angle now from E-Box. He's trying to find it. He has to isolate this before they can get the re elevations oh, the right way to do so, but Fox is ready for that. Absolutely sick stuff from Glaive with that P250. Actually headshots the third player as well after finding two. Definitely made that round a possibility. And Zipex in those sort of clutches. That's the kind of player you want there. Unfortunately, he can't get it done. The first kill was on a plate there, but the second one was incredibly well done from him. So there it is, 10-9. Astralis don't get the bomb down, but they do get money back in their favor. No all available just yet, but they have got the five AKs, and they've actually got some decent utility to work with right now. We did say it before in the pregame. They're allowing Fox to be the primary author on the CT side of this map as well. Did a good job towards B yesterday. We'll see whether he can continue that form as we go into round number 20 here. Looks like aggressive stuff throw. Coming from SK towards A main. First got position at Locker aggressively. Tries to spray through to catch anyone off. Being Zipix in this case, going out toward Long as he heard him run by. Chance shot, really. Wayne Gretzky motto on that one, but has to fall away on that because they'll give Noah's position as a result of it. Fox lovely shot to find Dupree. Device is still inside of middle, could wrap around, try and take highway, but Fallen's going to back off of that. They're going to give it to him, pull him in, try and force commitment. There's no one inside Z to take advantage of that, so Device is going to back away either way. Yeah, it's a straight-up default here, trying to challenge the initial choke points of the map. As Dupree walking to the crosshair of Fox out, looked a little bit too easy for him. We're not really utilizing the smokes or flashbangs to push him off there. And it's a high-risk face to take from Dupree. He gets punished for it as well. Nice adjustment from Taco as well. You've got the man advantage, full back, allowing them to commit. You've got that nice boost going on as well. It's normally good for one or two kills. So this is looking really positive for SK at the moment. The question is, I don't think they made noise on it. No, definitely not. I mean, I you do think it's a run boost. Yeah. So flashes out. 
considers it. Molotov thrown back in his direction from highway. First going to sit across as well. So even if they do go to check Taco first, ready in behind the forklift. And they still have two incendiaries as well. They can keep slowing them down at this point. This is actually looking amazing for SK. All in. From Astralis. Oh. Good shot. Device up the top of highway. Never mind the boost. First going to have to go large. They said he'd have to beat them in. They can play off each other, but he only gets one. Kirby's in position, and he finds a second. Falling over the hood no. of the truck. Cold, though, in time. We'll find Device Bomb. Just going to go down. It leaves it to a two versus two. And they're going to play it from inside the door. It's planted tight at default. You can't go toward A main. You can't go all in. You've got to leave someone at quad. That's exactly where Glaive's going to be. As soon as they identify that, it should be red and covered off. They've got kits on both. AWP on Fox. As Cold gets ever closer. Door left open very intentionally so that they can't bait back in Kirby with the sound cue, but they're going to walk into his crosshair. He's got the lineup. Cold goes down. It's just the AWP left. Misses his opportunity as he crosses back to the other side as well. And now they can shut the door because two on one, they can be able to bait him in. Spots over toward the fire as well. All it is is to confirm he's not on the bomb. You're exactly right. He's got to get away. This AWP is in a prime position. Finds one, but he's got to get out still. Second shot is lovely. No time, and he's going to go down. Well, he does deny a lot of money, to be fair, to Fox there. I thought he was going to fall back much sooner than that, but he finds both kills. So that's made it very expensive for Astralis, at least. But they do win the round. That was the difference maker. Device coming up at that point and actually spotting that boost player. Kiabi going nuts as well towards CD spawn. It looked like a round they were locked out of. And Kiabi, nice little position there. Good crossfire towards quad and that squeaky position. So they do find their first round of Astralis here in the second half. It's now 11-9. Haven't broken the money quite yet. It is pretty weak for SCA. You can see two SMGs, three M4s. That's why I said to Fox, like, you probably want to be saving that all. Right? So denying Astralis money, but the T side is much easier to buy on the CT side. You can actually get AKs pretty easy after winning a round. Now, they don't have the orb to play with, and that's what got them that opening pick before. Now it's up to Cold Zero, jumping in the fire here. Um, hello? That's, that's spread a lot further than you, I think, anticipated, Cold. That's the problem, because Strolls just pick up a round you talked about. Everyone going down, big investment. Yeah, normally they it doesn't spread to that position, so he's trying to actually dummy it out a little bit there. Didn't even realize how much damage he was taking. Yeah, gone already as well. Like I say, that's a big, big loss, because they need this round. If they take this, they get the momentum firmly in their favor. And we get toward a tie game. Good pickup as well from Dupree. Fox gone. Be open. Bomb. Just getting there now, though. So a bit of a chance to deny cross. And position. Better shot, Dupree. Fur caught off. And a smoke at tree is going to allow Bomb in. So this should be done and dusted. I think SK is going to back away from it. The problem is in doing so. Device is in a perfect... Ooh. Not quite perfect. Perfect position. It's a good position yeah. shot. <laughs> it's the final execution there. Like, obviously, it's a difficult one. You're expecting it to walk into your crosser there. It just stops in time. Falling gets away with 46 HP, but definitely the hunter's on at this point. You want to take down these weapons for SK Gaming at this point. Glaze trying to get both kills here. There's one. That's a second as well. Nice positioning from him. And pulls it off perfectly. 12-9. That should be a full eco at this point Every, for SK. Everything Fox did, okay, yes, didn't win the round, but to take five down is gone now because they keep five up in this. They avoid the four-round reset. Eco. Yeah, so... SK fully not going to really cause too much damage. And here's Dupree. That was a really weird round from Cold Zero there. Like, sometimes you can jump on that wooden plank below, beneath the vent, and the flames don't affect you there. But he could say, as soon as he jumped on it, he was losing damage. And he stayed around for like, what, four seconds? Went down to 10 HP. Surely you soon as you realize, okay, this is damaging me. You need to get off as quickly as you possibly can. But he heavily committed to that and got himself in a world of trouble. And it's like we said, full eco at this point. Nothing really invested at all from SK. He'll be taking a lot of damage as well. Cold Zero goes down to 32 HP. At this point, Astralis know the money's weak. They've got mid control as well. He's going to be flashing out his CT to creep on that CT. Sandbag position. Headshot from Kiabu. Shot from Device. I'm finding people in mid with enough opportunity and options against pistols that really can't do much at this point in time. Two left over. Fox is going to try and play headshot. Take advantage of this. No Molotov thrown toward him just yet. The site, all able to take him down, all attention turned toward him. It's just for remaining one versus five again for Astralis, which means another round they'll be able to keep pending what happens to Zipix perhaps with three HP, but five alive. And that gives them not only one round, but one and a half rounds in hand. So pending bomb plants, they could get two full buys out of this, even with losses. Yeah, absolutely. Having a look at the money for SK as well next round. There'll be a third stage loss bonus, so they have 2,400 on top of what they've got right now. So it'll be enough, like, they'll be able to squeeze that up just about, I think. Not even that, actually. So they are going to be struggling pretty tremendously in the next round. They have to go for the five M4s. And, uh, yeah, that's why Fox got the opening pick. It means you can actually shut down the big position of one player as well once he gets set up. So this will be a rough round going forward. And if they lose this one, potentially could mean another Rika going forward as well. So Famous in the hands of Cold Air that allows him to get a bit of utility here. Very important in cash to shut down those initial rushes coming in. And we have got Taco waiting to buy. So four M4s come in, no kits as of yet. No head armor, not really a big deal against the AKs. There's no one going to be buying SMGs at this point. And Fallen. 
And we're picking up the final M4 there as well. 39, a big round here. SK desperately needs to pick this one up. The money will be in tatters next round if they don't win this, and it has to be a convincing win at that. And SK, after looking so lost, I have to say, I've never team, seen a team look so lost to make a convincing case for a comeback. Find themselves against adversity again in this game. Cool. going to try and push up once more. Take advantage of a smoke gap that presents itself. It may work out because that bounce up's going to go a little bit further. Going with the bounce, which means the trajectory is different, hence the spread being slightly different. Cole finds the one shot, tries to get away, doesn't realize two's there. 13 HP, has to stay in the smoke nearly. Finds Glaive for his troubles. The game's expecting him to be in the corner. Glaive goes down to eight. That's good work from Cole, all things considered. Yeah, absolutely. The fact he got one and did that damage as well, it looked like he was done for at that point. And he manages to bring it into a four and four. Glaive, low HP, but look at the vice. Surely going to be punished this point. Sacco, easiest frag of his life. Walks into his crosshair, takes him down. As the vice there trying to sneak into the A bomb side. He fought after that. B presence has been shown. The rotations would have come in at that point. He can get towards quad. Call for his teammates to come in and potentially shut down any rotating CTs. Doesn't really work out that way. And he goes down for free at this point. I like the wrist though. I like his mentality behind it. And we have got one minute remaining here, but that damage Cold Zero have done has made things a little bit more tricky. Four Glaives, eight HP, and the man advantage now for SK. And like we said, this is a massive round for them. Could be GG if they lost this round. And if they do win it, they need to keep the numbers as they are right now. Keep four players alive. That would be fantastic. Bounce smoke top highway. Trying to throw the sales pitch the other direction now. Having device go down. They want that rotation back toward A. They might just get enough of it because they've only got Fox inside the site. Close to the by though, with a flash oh, coming wow. through. Is fallen, but Fox, he falls immediately to Kirby. They're gonna get a bomb plant there. There's still a straw. He's gonna get out in three versus three with flames at fallen speed. He's gonna have to back away. 15 seconds. They're now set for a post plant. All three of them are on the platforms. So they've gotta get it quickly across over toward checker, hell positions, and watch off potentially vents as well because Taco coming that direction. It's a fix call. The open good response. Kirby saves him, bails him out. And that's gonna leave him to take out fallen Taco. He'll get one of the two. Low HP on Glaive. He's gotta be careful here because Taco pulls it down, but two HP has to play this perfectly. No kit as well. Still has the time to work with. Flash goes in, thankfully dodges out those shots, but Zipix knows exactly where he is, can play it to the T, and he does exactly that. It's going to be another round for Astralis. There it is. It's Fox waiting on that B side there. Allows him to get very close. He got baited in by the footsteps coming towards the headshot position. He's thought, okay, I can hear them coming. Let's have to get one kill here. That's my objective. And as soon as he does, changes the position and anticipates that headshot position, KRB comes in on the actual bomb side, punishes him. The smokes are deployed, and it's a really nice recovery from Astralis at that point. SK, like I said, the money's going to be in, in disarray after losing that one. They can't even justify the force by here. They're going to have to allow Astralis to actually get to map points. You can see they've kept about 2k in their bank accounts here. They have purchased a scout that's in their hands of Fallen. Like, there's always a chance you can win these ones when you have the CZs and Deagles and someone like Fallen with a scout. Out. Sure, there's always a very slim chance it can happen, but it's like maybe 10% with this sort of buy. Fallen's gonna watch toward the as well when they push forward with one weapon. They've got the scout. A little bit of impressions, to be fair. They've already got Zipix down inside of the cubby. Fallen peeks to try and find that. He actually gets a lovely shot on Kirby as we snap away from him. Good start, SK, but still a lot more to find if they want any chance in this. Taco pushes up and Squeaky realizes they're still out toward the lobby area. And he'll back away accordingly. Well then, we have got that first pick, so something to work with here at least. Fallen, like we said, one of the deadliest snipers in the world right now. And will be Dupree showing presence towards the B side, but you can see the aggression. And one player in towards Lockers as well, but the device won't be a perfect Molotov. Fur will actually be able to survive that. Could be to the terrorist detriment at this point. He said he's molotov there, and actually not played out of position. This is falling apart now for Astralis, but he do find a kill and return. An important kill as well. Taco pushing forward. Device is able to find wow. that good pick on Fur. <laughs> that was overlooked because they only expected one to be inside the locker position. They wrapped in from Squeaky. He could have found that. Instead, they checked Quad. It's falling. It's back over the site. They picked up an AK. And Fallen's got a second one now on the scout. It's working out for them. That buy is justified, but Zipix laid up toward the highway position. We'll find Fox. It's just down to Cold Zero. No armor, but does have an AK smartly. Back knowing he's going to rotate exactly that head to be, and they've got just enough time to get there. This is perfect. Zip is like, watch the vent position, watch what's highway. Bomb will go down. They know Coldzera will be around that CT spawn position. So that's actually a really nice call. Against a player like Coldzera, you've got time to work with it. That's a really, really strong call. They can work together. They've ascertained the site. It's clear this point. A poor smoke towards CT spawn, unfortunately, but it shouldn't be a huge problem. It's going heaven regardless. So let's see if Coldzera can find the headshots required here. Definitely capable. Takes a head time return, though, and Glade finishes them off. And that's all alley oop there from Astralis. And there it is, they managed to pick up round number 15. Map point here, 
And now, this is what SK Gaming are going for. They were playing for overtime in that previous round. They could have forced it. Like I said, that would have been GG at that point. Deagles, armor, maybe a couple of Famuses here. Fallen did a great job to kind of find some kills, but didn't really affect the economy too much. And they're going for the double orb setup here to adjust and hopefully get six rounds in a row. Fox and Fallen, the double orb combo on this team. Now, obviously, it was Cold Zero and Fallen before, possibly or arguably one of the most deadliest duos in the world. Had to readjust there with Fox coming in. It doesn't really fit the mold for the team. That's why it was an interesting pickup when they actually got him in the lineup. And as we saw at the start, good flash in, but for actually gets caught oh. by it. It's mistimed. Oh, as Sech fallen, compensates, walks in. Takes advantage of her death and somehow finds two kills. They get smoke off the board in front of that squeaky position. Taco tries, but as soon as that money was lost on the SK side after opening the half with four, the momentum shifted and it almost seemed like that was fate. It was never really going to work without the weapons up. But with this double up, we'll see if they can find it. Two kills going to the first one, one on the second. It works out. One on either side of the map. That's exactly how it should be played. As Zipix wants the bomb, but wants his life. So he's timid about grabbing it. He'll do so. Leave it to Device to try and find space on the map. Over toward B. He's well on AWP and beats out a shot from Fox. No one inside the vents just yet, but he's waiting for the rotation. He's actually set, holding. Gold was going to walk through, except for the fact that he heard Zipix inside of mid. He lost that duel. Now Device can turn back. He can start to look for Fox, who misses yet another. Fires just under his elbow. Device is going to try and move him with the Molotov, get to the other doorways, hoping that he goes to the right, to the left, but he reads it either way. He gets a good headshot. Very well done from Astralis to pull this back. Back to where they go. They're so good at these mid-round calls at this point. You can see the rotation. Look in the top left right now. The CT's taking the bait. They're assuming this is going to be execution. And now an open bombsite towards a lovely stuff from Astralis here. Glaive, he's come in now. He's actually calling for this team. And you can see the decision so good at this point. It's reading SK like a book. And now the bomb has go down. It's going to be SK fallen and Taco on the retreat here, trying to retake this bomb site. They've got so much time to set up here. They have to go straight in. The time ticking away. It's going to be another five or six seconds before they even get to the bomb site at this stage. This is so well played from Astralis. As you said, the mid-call. Device holds up. He's talking, communicating. Device, get another. He's playing Fox. was clever. Yeah. He's got Taco down. It's all on fall. And he's got an AWP, but he's on the pistol. He's hunting down. Zipix, who's low, and he's in behind quad, trying to bait him out. Time is ticking. Ever so precious. He does have a kit, but he's got no life. Zipix will close it. 16-9. Astralis take map one over SK Gaming. Yeah. Very solid performance there from Astralis. They look great in the group stages here, and they seem to be continuing that form here at these, yes, yeah, Season 2 Finals. And lovely stuff. Overall, their first half was great. It was a nice adjustment from SK Gaming to get back into it and find 10-5 overall. They got the last four rounds, I believe, as well. Got eight they, in a row, if you They actually next. picked up the pistol in the second half, so they made it a convincing game. Maybe a little bit more flattering to them. I think they looked absolutely lost there at the beginning of the half. You can see SK very flat indeed. Didn't really seem to know what their intentions were in terms of the defaults. The executions weren't really there as well. The money ran away from them. But towards the end there, uh, Astralis spoke very strong indeed. Yeah, and the other thing I want to point out, too, because Fox did step it up definitely on this map. It's not like he had massive kills. No one really did, but Fur was a little bit quiet. Yeah. And Fur does play some pretty important positions. Obviously, in A, he got caught out quite a few times trying to play in toward A main when the squeaky door was opened. I think the communication was definitely a little bit off on that side. I, and I, I do say, I think the confidence from SK to go to this map stemmed from the Dignitas curveball yesterday. And it, I think they played themselves a little That's bit. Astralis are looking quite good on it right now with Glaive. Just in terms of the storylines of this event, if you're not 100% away, just shooting it for the finals. Fox is here because FNX has left the team.